Hey there it's me Eden, if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to my channel and visit my Patreon page for early access, link in the description. Next morning I woke a little late, and ate a rushed breakfast. To my horror, my mum noticed my newly tidied eyebrows. I had to make up some story of wanting them to look tidier, but she didn't seem particularly convinced by this. She did not press the point however, which was something of a relief. I sat next to Anita on the train ride in. Did you have a good evening last night? She asked me, smiling. Yes, I replied, and after a pause added. Did you? Not really, she told me. John was being a right pillock. All he wanted to do was stay and watching telly again. God, he's like a forty-year-old man. My heart sang at these words, again John had disappointed Anita, which by anyone's reckoning, must have improved my chances. I tell you, she went on, I can't wait until Saturday and the chance to have a proper night out. My heart fell again. How was I going to tell her that I didn't want to take part in a girl's night out without sounding as boring as John? I decided that could wait a while as the journey continued. The first shock of the day was that school was going to end at 12 noon. Apparently they wanted to use the afternoon to prepare everything for the festival. This had apparently been announced on Monday when Anita and I had bunked off, so it was news to us. Oh but Steve that's brilliant, she enthused, as we left the hall where the announcement had been made. We can go straight around to my place after school and get some more practice done. I think I'm practiced out, I protested. Of course you're not, she went on. Anyway, we need to test you out on the questions. Questions? I asked. Yeah, don't you remember? In the final you'll be asked some questions by the judges, and you'll be marked on how girlishly you answer them. I had forgotten this additional bit of torture, but I still wasn't enthusiastic about spending more time dressed as a girl. Well I suppose I'll be able to do that without having to wear a skirt, I said, trying to make it an observation rather than a request. Oh don't be silly Steve, Anita responded. You have to do it dressed as a girl. The more practice you get the better, remember. For God's sake Anita, I blurted, I must have spent more time dressed as a girl since Saturday than I have dressed as a boy. I know, she responded quickly. It's good isn't it? Well maybe, I went on, but I don't think I need any more practice now. I must be nearly an expert. She looked at me with disbelief on her face. I don't know about that, she said. I've been dressing as a girl for 15 years, and I don't think I'm an expert yet. She simply wasn't getting the message. I decided to try another tack. Look, I said, you know you said it made you feel kinky kissing me when I'm dressed as Sarah? She looked around us, to see if anyone was listening, and reassured, turned to me and nodded. Well, I continued, I thought perhaps if I was dressed as Steve this afternoon it wouldn't feel as kinky. She looked at me quizzically for a moment. Nikki will be there as well, she said eventually, and my heart plummeted to new depths. The only solace I had been taking from this final practice session had been the potential to explore my relationship with Anita even further. Oh, I see, I said flatly. Well she's in on this as well you know, Anita admonished me. She is your co-sponsor after all. I turned away. There was going to be no repeat of the heaven I had been taken to in the cinema, not that afternoon anyway. Perhaps I should refuse to go at all, I wondered, but the lure of time in Anita's company was too much for me, and I simply smiled. We had lessons that morning, and walking between them, I was suddenly accosted by Chrissy for the second day running. She was on her own this time, which was some relief, as I felt less threatened by her alone. Hi Steve, she said brightly, moving towards me with her hips swaying. I thought I might bump into you here. She then proceeded to do so very literally, and provocatively. 
I wondered what you were doing Saturday, she asked me, still rubbing herself against me and making me back against the wall. I'm going out, I replied. Her face fell into an affected pout. Oh, I'm sure you could call whatever it is off, couldn't you? Me and you could do all sorts of interesting things together. She put her hand on my shoulder, very gently, and began massaging it. All you'd have to do is throw another sicky tomorrow, that's not so very difficult, is it? Not for a handsome and resourceful lad like you. She looked at me seductively and pleadingly. Her perfume was as strong as the day before, but, even through the fog of lust, I could sense her insincerity. No. I told you yesterday, Chrissy. I promised Anita I'd do it, and I will. She pulled back immediately, and the smile and seduction left her face in an instant. Anita's little lapdog, she sneered. Or Anita's little Cindy doll, I should say. Do you like it when she makes you put on her knickers? Does it make you feel really nice? I blushed furiously. No, I responded. Oh, I bet it does, she went on triumphantly. You just love it when she makes you wear her knickers, because you're a fairy, aren't you? No, I replied, more insistently. Anita's little fairy, she went on. Unless you pull out of the contest tomorrow, I'm going to tell everyone how you begged her to let you wear her knickers, how you begged me to let you wear mine first, and then asked Anita afterwards when I'd called you a pervert. That never happened. I gasped. She raised her eyebrows. My word against yours then. My word against Anita's little fairies. Don't Chrissy, I pleaded, seeing my credibility in the school about to vanish. It's not fair. She stared at me levelly. Well you know what to do if you want me to keep quiet, tell Anita she can stuff her knickers where the sun doesn't shine. I flinched and closed my eyes for a moment. I couldn't betray Anita like that, even if it meant having my name trodden through the mud. Then it occurred to me, I really would be wearing Anita's knickers for the contest. That would be proof enough for Chrissy's story, if anyone saw them. I might be able to hide them well enough when I was wearing the skirt or the dress, but we had to get changed first, and all the other contestants and their helpers would see for certain what I was wearing. So what's it to be, little fairy boy? Chrissy went on. I tell you what, if you're so much into wearing knickers, if you pull out of the contest, I'll buy you some of your own. Then you can wear them all the time. My mind was in turmoil, and I was on the point of at least saying that I'd give it some thought, when I looked up the corridor, and saw the unmistakable figure of Liz coming along towards us. Chrissy followed my eyes, and saw her too. Oh, it's your knight in shining armor again, isn't it? She sneered between her teeth. So you're not satisfied with being Anita's little fairy boy, you've got to be Liz Lee's maiden in distress as well, haven't you? Liz, by this time, was beside us. Hi, she said brightly, looking at Chrissy with a hint of warning in her eyes. Looking forward to the contest tomorrow, are you? Yes, I said, relieved to see her. Chrissy merely scowled. I see you've put a contestant in as well Chrissy, Liz went on. That's good. The more the merrier, that's what I say. Chrissy glared at her, but Liz showed no signs of moving away. She turned to me with fire in her eyes. Think about what I said, she spat, and then walked off up the corridor. Liz beamed down at me. That's the second time in two days I've had to rescue you, she said, amiably. It's getting to be a bit of a habit, isn't it? Yes, I replied meekly. Thanks. It's fine, she continued. I've heard that Chrissy has been trying to talk some people out of entering the contest. I'm not having that, especially with star contestants like you. I looked up at her, and the freckles on her face. Star contestants? You shouldn't be saying things like that when you're one of the judges. She smiled even wider and shrugged. Well we all have our favorites. 
but I promise to be fair, even with you. Anyway I've got a vested interest in who wins if you must know. I looked up at her again, her face framed by her blonde hair. Why's that? Because I get to escort the winner to the dance in the evening, she told me. I'm looking forward to it, especially if the right girl wins. I found myself blushing again, and tore my face away from hers, trying to understand the strange fluttering feelings going on in my chest as she talked to me. Well there are lots of good-looking people going in for it. You'll have plenty of choice. I managed to say at last. Well we'll see, she said, still smiling. Now, I'd best get on, and make sure Chrissy doesn't try and do any more damage. I'll see you tomorrow, looking your best. I leant against the wall for some time, trying to recover my composure, before I could walk on to the next lesson. Maybe there was something in what Lawrence had said. Liz did seem to be paying an unusual amount of attention to me. She had spoken to me before, and not just to try and get me to wear a skirt as part of the uniform protest, I remembered. More than once she had stopped me to tell me about her sporting triumphs. I had assumed in the past that she had simply been bragging, every single one seemed to involve her winning, whether it was swimming, running, the javelin, or more recently soccer. It scarcely seemed credible to me, however, that someone like Liz might be interested in me. There were one or two rumors about that she was a lesbian, but I put these down to disappointed suitors whom she had turned down, or a general dislike of girls who were good at sports. No, it was impossible. There was no way she really liked me, other than as a friend. She was just making sure that the contest went of well. I shook my head in wonder that I might have thought otherwise, and got on with my day. At midday we were all sent home. I traveled back with Anita and Nikki to her house, and almost as soon as we were through the door, I was cajoled into becoming Sarah the schoolgirl again. I put on the wig, the bra and the top, and then the skirt. This was becoming the accepted way of me slipping into knickers without revealing anything to my friends. I picked up the familiar white knickers with their pink love heart and hesitated. Anita, I began. She turned to look at me. I was thinking. Tomorrow, when I get changed for the first round, there's going to be all the other contestants in there with me isn't there? Anita looked at me with a puzzled look on her face. Yes, I suppose there will. I bit my lip, feeling a sense of betrayal as what I was about to say was so influenced by Chrissy. Well if I put these on then, everyone will see that I'm wearing girls' knickers, and a slip for that matter. Both Anita and Nikki looked at me. It was obvious from their faces that they did not share my dread of the rest of the school knowing that I had allowed myself to be put into girls' underwear as well as a skirt. I pressed on. Well I didn't really want anyone to know I'd be wearing girls' knickers, I went on petulantly. Perhaps we ought to drop the idea. No, they both exclaimed. We can't do that. Well my life's going to be impossible if anyone sees me putting them on, I went on, in something of a whining tone. I'd really feel more comfortable if I could just stick to my boxers. Well that's a ridiculous idea, snapped Nikki. We went through all this on Saturday, it's essential that you wear girls' knickers. Yeah, agreed Anita. Anyway, you've been wearing them on and off since Saturday anyway. What suddenly brought this on? I blushed at the memory of my confrontations with Chrissy. I just thought about how I'd be getting changed tomorrow morning, I lied. They both looked at me in disbelief. Then Anita said, well I tell you what, as you're so worried about it. I held my breath, wondering what she might suggest. Why don't you take them home with you, and put them on before you get to school? That way you can just put the skirt on over your trousers, then whip the trousers off, and no one will be any the wiser. That's an excellent idea, Nikki put in. I cringed. I had seen this as my last chance to salvage something of my masculine pride from the whole affair. What about the slip? 
I continued. Well you'll just have to put up with that, Anita told me. I'm certain you won't be the only contestant wearing one, Lawrence will for a start. Yeah, agreed Nikki. I was sunk again. My efforts to avoid the most feminine of my garments for the contest had been far too late, and far too feeble. All I could hope for was that everyone else would be too occupied with their own outfits to notice what I was putting on. Thinking about it, Anita's suggestion that I put the knickers on before I left for school wasn't so stupid. With a bit of care, I could avoid showing those off, particularly if I wore both pairs and the tights under my trousers. All right, I said resignedly. I'll take the knickers home with me, and the tights. I'll put them on before we start. Good idea, Anita agreed. Now, let's think about what sort of questions they might ask, and how you should reply. We spent the next few hours going through possible questions, and what my responses should be. It emerged that my greatest ambition was to be a model, and failing that, to work with children and animals. My greatest hope was that there should be more love in the world, and less war, my favorite men were tall and strong, and my favorite activities were shopping and partying. I was still being briefed when Anita's mom arrived back. I cursed my luck. I was now stuck with the difficulty of turning from Sarah back into Steve without her knowing. We eventually decided the best way of achieving this was to go home via Nikki's house, in the pretense of sharing homework together. When we got there, Lawrence was in, dressed the same as me in the girls' school uniform. He looked a little lost, as Maxine was not back from work yet, but still managed a smile. I rushed upstairs as soon as I could, and changed from one school uniform to the other, made my excuses, and went home. Fortunately, because I had missed the message about the school being closed that afternoon, my mum didn't notice that I was late. I went up to my room for a while, took the knickers and tights out of my bag, and hid them in one of my drawers, shuddering at the thought of having to put them on again the following morning. I ate dinner, watched some television, and went to bed fairly early. I slept well enough, dreaming only of Liz and Anita having a javelin-throwing contest, while I sat and watched them wearing my peach dress. Tomorrow, I told myself firmly, would be the end of Sarah. I could put the whole episode behind me, and return to being a normal 15-year-old boy. How wrong I was. Please subscribe my channel for the next part. And visit my Patreon page for early access.